today's guest is Sasha Dents. She's one of these people that you meet from time to time who have such a broad range of knowledge and a huge heart. And they're able to integrate several different topics and themes into our current situation of how we're living today, what the problems and challenges are, and what the solutions can be. So there's no way to really describe the conversation you're about to watch other than please just watch it and enjoy. And loved means is a practical thing. It's not an, a feeling. As Dostoevsky put it in uh, Brothers Karmazov, love sounds like a dream and it sounds like a, a and it can be sometimes a wonderful feeling, but he said, love in action is harsh, it's horrible, it's awful. You will hate it. And that's what we did. We got rid of love. And because we don't like it. God isn't love. We don't want that. And it's demands on us. It's demanding on us. It's telling us. But if we don't, if we don't meet those demands, then the conscience does not grow does mm. not develop mm. because you extrapolate from I was loved and my feelings mattered mm. my needs mattered even though I had nothing to give therefore other people's needs matter the earth's needs matter mm. children are automatically in touch with animals in the earth they talk to each other yeah. so they go oh yes of course of course well that'll nurture the interdependence of the parts exactly the interconnectedness the knittingness we don't have a lot of time to do this but <laughs> I don't know any fast quick cure it's going to be us doing what we don't want to do as a species yes. across the planet. And we can help each other with the pain of it. Part of the problem with being doing this is you're alone when you're doing it. You know, I remember one time uh, sitting in the kitchen crying when I had the third child, and, I, and he had ADD. And uh, no, I yeah. <laughs> um, and this friend of mine who had was had bipolar disorder, she said, Sasha, you have no idea how blessed you are. You have a husband, you have three healthy children. Yes, he's got ADD, but you know, yeah. this is nothing. You, you, and I said, yeah, but I have MS. And she said, you cannot complain. You have no idea the suffering I have having nobody and nothing. But that, that having nobody and nothing is exactly what the modern project wants you to be alone, autonomous, independent, self-sufficient, and needing no one. And that's not human. Sorry. Meanwhile, no. Meanwhile, following that tack is the planet needs us, and we don't have a relationship with it anymore. Or yeah, the relationship yeah. we have with her is yeah. is not necessarily the best one for her. So, is there a connection for you between how we treat each other and then, in turn, how we treat our planet? Exactly, because if it, again, if it begins with pre language, before you've got these, you know, cerebral ideas going on. It's automatic. Hmm. And children already have, hmm. uh, you know, you know, you put them outside within f less than 30 seconds, they're covered. <laughs> <laughs> Their yeah. whole body is covered. And, you know, they see the pet and launch, yeah. right? The, the, the bugs in the house, infestations of, <laughs> yeah, creatures that come in and are kept in places. <laughs> you don't, ah! Yeah. Yes. So there's nothing sanitary about a child. <laughs> you know, and that's the reality because they don't want to be. They're yeah. automatically invested. So by nurturing them, you're teaching them that this, this interdependence, as you put it, before the pre-modern world, there were three ways to be human. The male way, and I'm not going to denigrate the male way. The male way was the testosterone way. And what I, I've told, you know, Margo endless times, the thing that needs to be really understood about male biology is the amount of testosterone that get they hit with at puberty. If you understand the biology of it, you go, of course. I'll let you have your status. You need it. You know, I'll let you have your ego. You have to have it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't do what you're doing without it. Um, I'll let you have your drive, and we'll channel it in constructive ways in the service of this other project, which is called life. Yeah. And then there was the second way, which was being female, and she was like in touch with that, and she was in touch with this. So she was kind of a bridge between mm -hmm. the male way of being human, and then the third way was the child. And the child's way of being human was 
so close to the earth and the spirits of the earth. Yes. The souls of the earth. Yes. Um, and to get to your idea of the of the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine and the sacred earth, all of this was supposed to be a community, the non-human and the human. Mm-hmm. And to some extent, it was in the pre-modern world. I mean, when we look at history, we can see what they were doing at the top, right? The wars, the crusades, all the rest of it. But people on the ground, they had a priest and they had a village and the Benedictine monks who lived lives of intense self-denial had cultivated Europe and such that's why Europe was so successful. They had food production down cold. This is how you work with 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 nature. You have um, crop rotation, you have ways of respecting nature mm-hmm. and loving those limits mm-hmm. because they're shaping you. And nature had so anyway there was this this interdependence and interrelatedness and they and they as with Aboriginal people, it was literal. Like, just as, just as <laughs> Aboriginal peoples, many of them, I, I had my daughters like this, can see spirits. Yes. Actual spirits. Yep. And see the spirits in nature. Yep. They see the spiritual dimension, the transcendent dimension, if you like, too. Yep. Um, we no longer can. We have dumbed ourselves down. Yep. Just as we're flabby morally, we're spiritually stupid. Um, and there's so much we cannot, we simply are blind, literally. Yep. But children, if they're raised like this, if they're allowed to be children, they're allowed to be dependent, will automatically permit the needs and restrictions and limits of everyone else to be prioritized. The interconnection between people, um, which can invite, uh, if you want to go metaphysics with it, is about the energy waves and the energy auras around people. Mm-hmm. And now I'm going to blank on her name right now, but there's this great video clip by this professional female who does like a TED Talk lecture um, talking about the vibration rates around your body and in our right. ability to be aware of those vibration rates around your body. So as an example, she might say, you know when you're walking through the woods and you ducked and you ducked before you saw where the tree branch was? That was an awareness that humans have that we have lost touch with. Similarly, the human heart mm-hmm. is 50 times more powerful than the human brain for its awarenesses. They can measure this now. So she'll talk about human hearts all in this room are all aware of each other already the second they walk in the room. It's whether mm-hmm. or not you can know tap that, into that and be yeah. aware of it. And then to reinforce that with a physics model, she'll talk about there's a guitar in this side of the room and a guitar in that side of the room. The two guitars are tuned to each other. Mm-hmm. Pluck the D string on this guitar that D string will mm-hmm. resonate. That's me. Similarly, your heart, like the guitar, once it mm-hmm. starts to find resonance with other people. Yeah. But the premise is you have to be in tune yes. <laughs> with your own heart yes. in the first place. Yes. So she maps out in her way where uh, Dr. Sue Mortar, that's her name, she maps out in her way where a breakthrough can occur in a large political system or in a large economic system. But that wants to tap in together with Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu when they talk about community and happiness. Because there, in those conditions, the heart is joyful. That's yeah. why it's called the Book of Joy. Yeah. And you're mapping out, uh, here's some paths, you know, which would create the foundation through the next generation with huge shifts in economy, which means we're treating our environment better. Because that's how we started, was talking about what do mm-hmm. we do about the environment and how do we get there. Well, I would talk about the environment, but I also want to talk about what's happening to our social environment. You know, when 48% of kids don't have fathers, mm-hmm. they, they begin life already at risk. Missing half the energy. Yeah, so that's half the population hmm. who start um, w- with a financial and emotional and um, spiritual um, d- deficit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that all came out with uh, these movements that really gained momentum in the 60s in a way. Um, and they, the hard thing about it is, again, we can say, well, for example, with the liberals, we have the environmental prior, the environment prioritized. And we know that there's a crisis there. We're not going denying it, you know, or something like that. We also prioritize the needs of women. And we make sure that they're free from violence and all that kind of um, but we children children will 
and then there was the gay rights thing. You know, we, 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 they're no longer, they need to be free from oppression. Of course they do. And oppression, though, was seen as the model. <clears throat> Over here, we have people saying, no, we got to strengthen the family. We have to, you know, go back to the way things, we have to strengthen tradition. And tradition is the way things were always done. Yes. Right? The, the roots that we had from 1,500 years of Christianity, yeah. really. And there were some incredibly good things in there in our tradition. But the whole thing, you just have to say the word religion <laughs> and the room is cleared. And understandably, mm -hmm. you know, understandably. But we, because we box things in language and rhetoric in a certain way, mm. and we, we understand it that way. When you're talking about this, you're talking about that. So we got to get these two together. Do we need a new language? And I think it's to be a language that's that's Aboriginal, but I don't want to reject the male model or the European model either, mm -hmm. or the Western model, mm -hmm. because it was very male. Mm -hmm. But it was extremely, it has some incredible benefits. Mm -hmm. It's just the problem was, I like it, you know, as is its sort of imperative, it took off. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the, the Hindu model, which... It, that was the one that converted me to, to vegetarianism, um, where, you know, the spirits and souls of animals need to be respected, and we have to understand what's happening to animals. So in terms of the environmental crisis, to bring it back to what you were saying, it's not that these all these crises are interlocked, and what has to happen is, on the basis, deal with them all, which is we have grown-ups who, how can they be moral? How can they be... Um, emotionally mature how can they have virtue and, and, and do without and get rid of their excess and and lose it how can they do that when they were never loved hmm. is when i was bringing in alice miller i was trying to say it starts here and it ends there you start with a kid who's hit uh, be, while he's being toilet trained and then you've got someone who joins hitler youth and on it goes as a prison guard in a camp if we don't understand that, that human beings are biological creatures, and that's as important as ecology, and go back to some sort of obedience to biology, then I think we're doomed. But what, we, what human beings need biologically is love. And they need it first, at least, from one person. And if we prioritize that, <coughs> I, I think we would have a grassroots revolution or evolution where if everybody, if all children were allowed to be loved, allowed to be dependent, allowed to be with their mothers, and then when they didn't want to be with their mothers, allowed to develop past that in ways, but not put into a school system which says, this is how you have to be going to be a successful human being. Hmm. And the only thing we're going to prioritize here is your cerebral development. Right? That's the only thing that matters to us now. I mean, in the past, you could say well, <coughs> the, the muscle was literal muscle. Yep. And women couldn't participate in that upper body strength and all that. But this one, the cerebral muscle, women can participate in, and they've just joined in. Yep. Because it does mean freedom from all of that hands-on guck, either in the earth or with animals or with children. Mm -hmm that mothers and fathers necessarily, if they're doing the job right, must prioritize and put ahead of their own desires, ahead of their own. And the problem with being brought up, when you get a PhD, I don't want to talk to children, especially if they're younger than three. Maybe your PhD is in working with children. Exactly. <laughs> That's the problem, though. And then this person, because I saw it in, in, the, in academia, you know, they, they, very few of them had children. And the ones that did, someone else was raising them. And they, I remember one of them talking to me and saying, well, they called the nanny mom. And I said, well, why wouldn't they? Yeah. Why yeah. wouldn't they? And then that person is going to leave. So they've got this profound grief inside them, which they have to squash. Yep. So the whole system rips apart. I mean, there was a centrifugal movement with modernity which was to tear apart, atomize reality into fragments and bits, tear apart communities, tear apart families, tear apart couples, tear apart the interior part of it, and say, there's only one thing that matters is this big brain and that which supports it. Yep. 
because the successes could hardly be argued with. So going back to the emotional needs of children for me is how we change the world. They are not going to want to destroy the environment when they're adults. This is an excellent place to start. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was an amazing conversation. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for letting me spill it. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for watching. Be good, have fun, love each other. The Dennis Report is an independent media production. To support the program, go to DennisAtchison.com and click Become My Patron on Patreon. Patreon.